Okay, now we're going to look at Bray's kangaroo tail. The kangaroo tail I've got here has already been cleaned and cut up into nice sections. Kangaroo tail takes a fair while to cook. The ingredients that you do need are onions, oil, celery, carrots, potatoes already diced, and a little extra that I'm going to show you is the lemon thyme. If you can find that in the store, you can add that into it. But if you're out bush and the wild limes are in season, use some wild limes just to give that extra flavour. Okay, the first thing we need to do is heat up the fry pan, add some oil, and we seal off the kangaroo tail. Hear that sizzling again? That's sealing nicely. I just toss them around a little bit. And they're starting to seal it off nicely. It happens very quick. I put some onions in one side and do it all in one pot. Normally, if you've got a lot of kangaroo tail, seal off the kangaroo tail, take it out, and then do your vegetables separate. Guide your temperature, keep it on number 10. You need a lot of heat for this and a lot of stirring. Okay, we've got the onions cleared. We add some carrots. Kangaroo tails are very good for you. All right, a little bit of celery in there. A little bit of lemon thyme. As I said, you could use the wild limes from the bush and put it in there. Last but not least, a little bit of garlic. Okay, the next thing we put in is a little bit of tomato paste. Tomato paste gives it that richness. We only need a spoonful. When you're storing your tomato paste, once you've opened it, put your lid back and store it in the fridge upside down. If you do that, it stops the mould coming from the top. And it lasts longer. Okay, once we uh, cook the tomato paste in a little bit, we add some liquid. The kangaroo tail takes a long time to cook, up to about 40, 45 minutes. Okay, to get nice and tender. Also, we have to boost it up a little bit with beef cubes, and I've got a powdered one, a Maggie powdered beef cube. It's more yep. convenient, you can measure it out easier. And I'll put just a teaspoon in there, just to get those flavours. Okay. So we put the lid back on and we let it cook for an hour or so on simmer on number eight. Okay, we're halfway through the cooking process with the kangaroo tail and now it's time to put the potatoes in so they cook nicely together with it. Look at that nice colour in there, Richard. Yeah. Okay, we put the lid back on. And we'll let that cook for another 20 minutes and we should be ready to thicken it up. Okay, now we're going to test the kangaroo tail to see if it's uh, nice and tender. Beautiful. See how the fork comes out easy? So it's ready to go. All we have to do now is thicken it up. A little taste test again, just for the salt content. Might need to put a uh, little bit of seasoning in it, and it does need a little bit of salt. We'll cook that salt back in in a minute as soon as we thicken it up. Now to thicken it up, what you need is some grey box, Cold water is essential. Nearly there. See how it's starting to thicken already? Put the heat back up on it. Gives it that nice rich golden brown colour. See how it's starting to thick and get nice and shiny. Yep. That's what we want. All right, it's coming back to heat now and it's ready to serve. You can have rice if you want, but we've got potatoes in there. Look at that nice shiny colour. Nice, healthy milk. You can bake it or fry it, never know till you try it. You can even cook it up in a stew. Just roll them in a flour and fry them on the stove or chuck them in the fire and cook them on the coals. Serve with rice and a panic in the tea, some chips and salad anyway will do. 